Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Fallout 76 for another round of Legendary Crafting. Today, we're going to go for some more power armor, but this time around, we're going to go for Hellcat power armor on one of my heavy gunner characters. So, much like we did with Excavator armor, I'm starting from scratch here. I don't have any Legendary effects at all on this power armor, so kind of uh, almost anything is going to be an improvement. There are some combinations that won't work well, but there are others that will. So we'll uh, see what we can get as far as the effects go and go from there. Remember, if you like videos like this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, uh, follow me on Twitter. There's always more coming on the channel. And without further ado, let's get into it and see what we can get today. Okay, so what can we do here? We'll start with the torso. Three-star legendary mod. I've got enough modules here for uh, looks like 10 rolls of three stars. So we'll do our best here on all these pieces and see what we can get. That gives us enough essentially for two per piece if we have to. So our first roll here is a vanguards with luck and regenerating radiation damage while not in combat. So this is one of the few combinations that is definitely bad for me. Usually in my heavy gunner, I'm running at low health, so something that's going to regenerate radiation damage is not going to be helpful for me at all. The Vanguard's effect, again, I'm usually low health, so not going to be helpful at all. A little extra luck, I guess, doesn't hurt, but the other two effects just are absolutely incompatible with my build, so there's really no reason to keep this one around. What I probably should do here is actually craft a new one, but uh, my stash is kind of full, so I don't really have a lot of room to store anything at the moment. So we're just going to go ahead and re-roll these effects and uh, see what we can get here. If it's a dud, it's a dud. We're going to re-roll it. But yes, for those of you out there watching, remember, you don't have to waste this. You can, in theory... Put it in your stash and then go trade it in for scrip so you at least get some of your resources back uh, that's what i should do but you know situation being what it is we got to work with what we got to work with so let's roll again and see if we can improve this all right can we get better yeah this one's better okay this one's better we've got an assassin's effect we also receive less damage from explosions and five percent chance to deal 100 frost damage to melee attackers is it some god roll piece? No, not by any stretch of the imagination, but all of these effects are at least positives for my character. Receiving less damage from humans, not the most important thing in the world, but it can help on daily ops, it can help on you know certain scenarios, so it, there, there's something to be said for having a suit of armor with maybe mixed effects like that where you just take a little less damage from a bunch of different things that's what we ended up with on the excavator armor a couple weeks ago so having that here would not be the worst thing in the world either uh, receiving less explosion damage is always good because uh, we can't use the dense mod that i use on regular power armor to deflect that damage and dealing frost damage to melee attackers sure why not it'll slow them down a little bit can't hurt anything this isn't a bad one. Let's move on to another piece. All right, now we're going to move on to the left arm, and we've got the Vanguard's effect again, but this time with intelligence and a chance to reduce damage while 15% while sprinting, which is the Cavalier's effect. While I don't love the Vanguard's effect here because I'm a low health build, it doesn't actively hurt me. So it doesn't do anything negative to me, and extra intelligence gives me more XP. Cavalier's effect is definitely useful. As a heavy gunner, I sprint a lot. So I sprint to fights and I sprint away from fights and I sprint to get into position. So that's not a bad thing to have. So I think I'm going to hold on to this one for now. I only have so many chances here. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to trash this when I've still got three more pieces that I need to roll effects on. So this one not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but at least for now, we'll hold on to it. We'll move on to the right arm and see what we get there. All right, so now this one is a little better for me. So here we've got bolstering with luck and cavaliers again. So that's going to give us uh, 
an even stronger Cavalier effect, more chances for that Cavalier effect to, to activate while we're playing. So this is definitely solid. Bolstering, of course, is going to increase our damage and energy resistance while we're at low health. So we've already got really good damage and energy resistance, but a little more doesn't hurt. At least that tunes up with our build. Extra luck is going to improve critical chances. Not really super important on a heavy gunner character, but I guess it doesn't hurt to have it. The big thing here is Cavaliers. That's going to be another big help, especially when we're stacking that with multiple pieces. So this one with that left arm that even though it's vanguards, at least, hey, we've got two pieces of Cavalier. So that's pretty good. Uh, I think I'm definitely going to hold on to this one. We're not going to go back and re-roll the left arm yet. We're going to move on to another piece. Let's go to the left leg and see what we can get here. We've got Hunters with AP refresh and increases the sweet spot size while picking locks. So again, another imperfect piece with a, at least one decent effect. The Hunter's effect increases decreases damage we take from animals. So that's not a super important thing for weapons, but on armor, that's not bad. That's going to decrease damage from things like Yao Guais, Death Claws, Scorch Beasts, anything like that that can deal a lot of damage at one time. So reducing that is not a bad thing. Increasing AP refresh is definitely good. In power armor, we don't have the benefit of being unyielding, so we don't have huge piles of AP laying around to work with. So increasing that refresh speed is definitely good. Increasing the sweet spot on locks, I, I could care less about. Uh, it's pretty pointless effect if you ask me, but the, uh, the first two are useful. So again, not perfect, not god rolls, but not bad. Let's see what else we can do. All right, now we're going to switch over to the right leg. And here we've got another Vanguard piece. Hunger and Thirst grow 10% slower, and we have a 5% chance to deal energy damage to melee attackers. So this one, the Vanguard effect does nothing for me. Hunger and Thirst growing slower. I guess that's nice, but does it really matter that much? It's pretty insignificant. Dealing some energy damage to melee attackers, not a bad thing, but... This isn't a very good piece. And now we've rolled legendary effects on all of our armor pieces. So now we've got some more chances. That means we can take another shot at this one. We can take another shot at that left arm and see if maybe we can improve those with some better effects. So I think that's what we're going to do here. Let's go ahead and re-roll this one and see if we can improve it. All right. And now we've got mutants. That's not bad. Hunger and thirst grow slower and slowly regen radiation damage while not in combat. So, sadly, this one's got to get re-rolled again. The mutant's effect is not a major benefit, but at least it's something positive. Hunger and thirst growing slower, definitely a positive, not a negative. Unfortunately, for a low health build, regenerating rad damage while not in combat is an absolute deal breaker. We can't wear this. It will uh, it'll render the entire build useless. So even though the first two effects would have been fine, that third one is not going to fly. Let's try again. All right, we got to do better here. OK, no. Oh, you got to be kidding me, game. Come on. Minus 15 percent damage from super mutants would have been absolutely fine for me. I farm a lot of super mutant locations, so that wouldn't have hurt at all. Uh, extra charisma doesn't really do a ton for anybody, but doesn't hurt to have it. But unfortunately, that radiation regeneration, again, another total deal breaker. So we're going to have to try again here. We've only got enough modules for two more rolls. So hopefully we get something good on the next one and can take another shot at that other Vanguard's piece. Let's see what we get next. All right. Come on. Can we do better? All right, well, I guess it's better. It's exterminators, which isn't amazing. Less damage from Mirelurks and bugs. That's not too helpful, but because uh, I don't encounter that stuff a lot. But hopefully that helps with uh, like Mirelurk Queen Acid Spit. That could be useful. Taking less explosion damage. Again, that's going to stack with that other piece. So that's pretty good. And then we have yet another Cavalier piece. So now we've got three Cavalier pieces which almost makes me not want to re-roll that Vanguard's piece, but I think we're going to do that anyway. We've got one more shot, and it really isn't that good. I think uh, 
two cavaliers is better than three cavaliers with a piece that does nothing. So let's go back to that Vanguard's left arm and see if we can improve that before we wrap up here. All right, last try. What do we got? Oh, oh, you've got to be kidding me, game. Come on now. So now we've got cloaking, which is not all that useful if you ask me. Extra perception, which I guess doesn't hurt anything, but not super useful for my non-vats related uh, heavy gunner. Unfortunately, we've got regenerating radiation damage again. So we took a piece that was a little bit good and made it completely and totally worthless. So now not only is it worthless, but it actively hurts me. So now I have a dilemma on my hands. I don't have enough legendary cores for another three star mod. I hate to waste them on lower stars, but we've got to get rid of that radiation damage effect. That is going to be absolutely a deal breaker. So do I do two? Do I do one? Let, let's go for two stars. Hopefully we can at least get rid of that effect. So regardless of what it is, it's got to be better. And it is. Okay, so here we go. We've got hunters again, so we're going to take less damage from animals. I don't love it. I don't adore that effect. I have a piece that does it already. So stacking a little more of it, I guess, is good. I'd rather have a little more variety, but at least we got rid of uh, the bad effect. And then extra radiation resistance. That doesn't hurt us. Uh, our power armor is already pretty good about that, but reducing radiation is never, never something that's going to hurt us. As long as we're not regenerating that damage, then we're okay. So we took what was probably a better piece, turned it into a total piece of junk, and now we turned it into something that is at least not actively hurting us. So that's good. So no amazing rolls today, but we got a few useful ones. And that, I think, is kind of what you're going to see when you start rolling your own power armor for the first time. We didn't do too bad, didn't do too great, but it could have been a whole lot worse. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to bring us to the end of this one. So I do hope you enjoyed this. Uh, next week, we'll be back for a visit to Mama Mumbles. And uh, we'll make sure we visit her every other week so she doesn't get too lonely. I think we'll send old man McRib in for a visit. But uh, for now, this is going to do it for this one. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, follow me on Twitter. There's always more to come on the channel, and I hope I see you next time.